everyone. Welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours because we are covering the oh so wonderful snow leopard. This, of course, is a very special listener episode dedicated to Sarah, Steph, and Inman. Thank you for this wonderful suggestion, and I can't say how excited I am to learn about the snow leopard. If you would like to learn about a particular animal that you find interesting and would like your very own podcast episode, you can submit an animal request in one of three ways. You can send a message to Relax with Animal Facts on Instagram. You can also go to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and click on the Animal Request tab. And lastly, you could always email relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. Getting you guys writing in with your animal requests every day is one of the great privileges that I get on this show. So please do not be shy. Send in your requests because there are so many animals that we have yet to learn from. If you want more of the Relax with Animal Facts podcast, there is the Extinct Animal mini series happening on Patreon. We've already covered the Dodo, Woolly Mammoth, and the Tasmanian Tiger. So if you want access to all of that, you can go to patreon.com slash relax with animal facts, or just go to the description and all the links are there. I'm just going to say where I got my facts from for this episode, and then we are going to dive right in. I got my facts from snowleopard.org, www.ca, discoverwildlife.com, and etimonline.com. All of those resources are in the show notes or the description of this episode, so feel free to explore to your heart's content. This podcast episode would not have been possible without them. And now we are going to begin to wind down a little bit. I want you all to notice maybe where you are carrying some tension. It could be in the head, it could be in the hands like mine, it could be in the legs. Everyone really is different in this way. So whatever is tense for you, in my case it is my hands, we are going to be setting it aside for just a little bit. We do not need that tension where we're going. So I encourage you to ride alongside me, relax those parts of your body as we strap on our snowshoes and go into the snowy, rocky mountains of Central Asia where the snow leopard resides. So as we are walking through this very thick snow, we first have to know exactly where we are. If you've never been to the Himalayan mountains, that's where we are today. But snow leopards live in general in some of the most harsh climate conditions on this planet. They will inhabit not only the Himalayas, but other very rocky mountains in Central Asia. They inhabit primarily arid barren slopes without any trees and very sparse vegetation. Another popular place we could have been is the Siberian mountains in Russia, sporting some of the most unforgiving climate on this planet. But it's a place where the snow leopard has absolutely no problem. While we are buttoned up to our nose, the snow leopard can just relax and lay down on the cold rock because of its nice thick fur. The scientific name of the snow leopard is Panthera uncia. That first word, Panthera, might sound a bit familiar to you. And that is because Panthera is the genus of the true big cats. That includes cats like the lion, the jaguar, the leopard, 
and the tiger. And that second word, ansia, comes from an old French word that is spelled in English as once. And that same word was originally the name for the lynx before its common name that we know now. In total, the snow leopard can be found in around 12 different countries. That includes China, it includes the Himalayas where we are today, it includes Nepal, Mongolia, Bhutan. So they do inhabit more than just a couple of places. But despite the fact that they have a range of over 2 million square kilometers, scientists estimate that there may be only about 3,900 to 6,400 snow leopards left in the wild. That is not a significantly large population. That would mean that there would be about one snow leopard per about 200 miles of distance. That's about 333 kilometers for those of you who prefer that measurement. This is a staggering distance. Only one creature of its kind within 200 miles of another one. This shows both the immensity of the range in which they inhabit, but it also shows how few in number they are. The snow leopard really prefers its privacy and will be all on its own for most of its traveling. Not only is it usually very solitary, but it's also incredibly elusive. Catching a glimpse of a snow leopard is something that is not as easy as you would think. There are videos of people attempting to catch snow leopards on camera, and sometimes it can be challenging. They are carnivorous, meaning they do not like their vegetables. They will eat only other animals, and their main prey is ibex, argali, and blue sheep. For those of you unfamiliar with maybe all three of those animals, the ibex is a kind of wild goat that loves its heights. The argali is a kind of sheep that you might know for its incredibly thick and ringed horns. If you were to Google a photo, maybe you would see that you know this creature. But the blue sheep might be something that you have really never heard of. Despite its name, this animal is not blue, and it is also not a sheep. These creatures are closer to goats than they are anything else. Those are all creatures that would be fantastic to cover in a future episode, but they will have to wait. We know that the snow leopard occupies some of the coldest places on the planet, and so they must have some pretty thick coats to keep them warm, and that they do. The fur that is on their stomach is about five inches thick, which is assuredly warm. One other unique fact about the snow leopard is that they do not have the ability to roar. Instead, they will choose to growl, make a sound closer to a yowl or to a mew. There is also something that they do known as chuffing, which is a non-threatening vocalization in which they blow air through their nose. Kind of how maybe some of us would scoff at something or chuckle just through our nose. The snow leopard is going to use that to be able to communicate. Their tails, which are both thick and massive, along with very furry, will be able to shield them just a little bit more from the harsh weather, along with giving them the ability to maintain their balance. If you have listened to the cheetah episode, it is a similar mechanism that is going on. The tail will act as a kind of rudder to steer and to balance. It will play a crucial role when they are in the pursuit of their dinner. Because the snow leopard can live over 5,000 meters above sea level, that begs a very important question. How does the snow leopard cope with this kind of altitude in the first place? If any of you have been on a mountain before today, you'll know that as you climb up and up, 
the oxygen gets thinner and thinner. Sometimes people can get what is called altitude sickness. It can be a very difficult place to be if you have never been exposed to such an atmosphere before. The snow leopard has a large muscular chest that allows it to take very deep breaths. Because of these very deep breaths, they will be able to absorb a lot of oxygen from the thin and high altitude air. One assumption that scientists made before, which is a very fair one, was that the snow leopard had some form of a special or more efficient hemoglobin than other cat species did, enabling them to maybe transport the oxygen that they did get from their very thin environment. But this was actually found not to be the case. We simply do not know, besides the fact that they take very deep breaths, how the snow leopard can survive so well at these very high altitudes. So the next assumption is that their large and muscular chests allow them to take these incredibly deep breaths, which is what is exclusively responsible for their being able to survive where they do. This big cat can jump pretty far. They can jump as far as 15 meters. This jumping distance is going to play a crucial role in their hunting capabilities and is probably one of the reasons that the snow leopard is able to take down prey three times its own size. They can jump six meters vertically. For any of you that have ever done a vertical jump test or for those of you that maybe play basketball, you would know that a six meter vertical jump is no small deal. They are able to reach a gutter on an average two-story house just by jumping from where they are. Suffice to say, maybe these are the Michael Jordans of cats. We talked a little bit about their tail before, but it's also important to note that their tails are thick for a reason. Within their tails, they have a good amount of adipose tissue, just meaning fat. So their tails act as a sort of fat storage to help them get through times in which maybe there isn't much prey around or they haven't had so much success in hunting. They will have something to just keep them going between those times of difficulty. They will also wrap their tail around their body like a very thick and furry scarf for that extra warmth when they're curling on a rock or somewhere else. The snow leopard also loves to bite on its own tail. Scientists are not entirely sure why they do this. Some have said that maybe it keeps them warm somehow, but the majority of researchers seem to think that it is actually just a very playful behavior. No matter how large a cat is, it maybe still loves to play. And when you have a big, fluffy tail, why not? So if you look down at your feet, you'll notice that you are wearing a pair of snowshoes. What looks to be like two tennis rackets strapped to your feet. And this is so we are able to navigate the very deep snow without going in right up to our hips in the white fluff of these Himalayan mountains. The snow leopard doesn't wear snowshoes like these, but in a sense it is actually wearing snowshoes. Their paws are furry and huge, giving them an organic or anatomical snowshoe on each of their four legs. It will allow them to spread their weight very evenly across the snow so they don't pierce right through to the bottom and get lost in a winter wonderland. These very furry, wide, and large feet can help muffle the sound of their movement. It will help in escaping situations in which they don't want to be in, but also it will help tremendously when they are on the offensive to try to get their prey. The snow leopard in the wild lives from about 15 to 18 years while they can start having snow leopard babies of their own at about 2 to 3 years of age. 
In captivity, the snow leopard actually does not live all that much longer, just about 25 years of age. Sometimes we see large discrepancies in the lifespans of animals that are in the wild versus those that are in captivity, but in the case of the snow leopard, they are pretty similar. The snow leopard, on average, will be about four feet from its head to the base of its tail, but the tail will add an extra three feet on average. So that is about seven feet in total from the end of their head to the end of their tail. The snow leopard will weigh between 55 to 120 pounds, but some of the largest male snow leopards have been recorded to weigh up to 165 pounds, which is around 75 kilograms. They have a sort of tawny color, this grayish, beigeish color, along with those signature black to brown spots that cover their body. Now for the name portion of the episode, we are going to just cover that word leopard. The word leopard is a late 13th century word and means large cat of the wooded country of Africa and South Asia. So we see that the snow leopard is not necessarily of the very thickly wooded country of South Asia, but they are in the upward mountainous regions of Asia. And this word will go back to the Latin word leopardus, which means lion part or lion panther. The animal in ancient thought seemed to be a hybrid of these two species, of a panther and of a lion. So in a very literal sense, from the Latin point of view, the snow leopard is the snow lion panther, which is pretty cool. Now we are going to go to the review portion of the show in which I read a review from one of you special listeners out there. And this review was written by Horsey Girl 36 and Horsey Girl wrote all the way from the United States of America and writes, Very relaxing and interesting. Thank you for putting this together. I look forward to each new episode. Thank you, Horsey Girl, for taking the time to write such a wonderful review. I am very glad that you look forward to each new episode, and I am also glad that you were able to join me on these adventures along with everyone else here listening. If the show has helped you and you want to leave a review, it truly is one of the most impactful things you can do to give back, and it only takes a couple of moments. It really is one of the most impactful things you can do. If you want more Relax With Animal Facts and you want to be face-to-face with a dodo or with a woolly mammoth, you can join the Patreon where we are exploring extinct animals that are no longer with us. Thank you all for joining me. If you want to request an animal, all of the ways you can do so are in the description of the episode. The snow leopard is one of the most beautiful creatures that we have covered so far, and I am so glad that all of you could join me on the Himalayan mountains today. I hope that you will join me on the next podcast episode with the next animal. Take care.